A very small error during a time jump causes a drastic change in the present. Can the two scientists fix this mess and bring everything back to normal? Let's find out in the movie. In a jungle, a group of hunters led by scientist Dr. Travis shows up. The group consists of two clients, Alicia and John, and five employees of Time Safari Incorporated, Travis, Jenny, Lucas, Marcus, and Clay. While looking for their prey, Alicia constantly asks her father, John, how he is feeling. Irritated, John assures his daughter that he's feeling all right, so she doesn't need to worry about a thing. Shortly after, they feel a rumble, as if something big is coming their way. At this time, Travis reminds everyone that their guns should not fire unless his gun does. And to Alicia's and John's surprise, the prey that they are hunting turns out to be an Allosaurus, one of the most vicious dinosaurs. When the right moment comes as Travis fires, the group shoots the dinosaur down. After their successful hunt, it is then revealed that their journey is made possible through a time jump. It is a service provided by Time Safari Incorporated, owned by Charles Hatton, who has made a fortune from time traveling technology. They offer rich people the experience of going back to the Jurassic period where they can even hunt dinosaurs. As the group goes back to the present and celebrates, Charles greets and commends Alicia and John for what they have done. During their conversation, Alicia notices the absence of Travis, who has snuck back to the office where he comes across Clay, who is not participating in the celebration as well. Although Clay is part of Time Safari Incorporated, he is actually an employee of the Department of Temporal Regulation, a government agency created specifically for the company to observe if they're always following the safety protocols. When Clay leaves, Charles shows up and finds Travis working with Tammy, the company's AI and the system that makes the time jump possible. After convincing and a little blackmailing from his boss, Travis decides to join the others. He then shows Alicia and John their souvenirs from the hunt, their suits, and a hollow disc, which contains a video recording of the hunt so the customers can watch their trip. And to boost up the old man's ego, Travis tells John that he is the one that gives the killing shot to the dinosaur. However, their fun is cut short when another scientist named Dr. Sonia arrives at the party uninvitedly and suddenly sprays red wine on everyone. She then sarcastically congratulates them for a successful hunt. When the security comes to take her away, she screams at them, warning them that what they're doing will cause a catastrophe and addresses Travis, stating that Charles is just using him. When Sonia is gone, Charles calms down the situation. However, Travis gets interested in what Sonia said, so he catches up to them and advises the security that he will handle her. He asks her to elaborate on what she's talking about, to which Sonia reiterates that messing up with the past will only bring catastrophe to the present. According to her, she's the one who helped create the AI, but Charles did everything in his power to take away all the credit from her. And what disappoints her most is that her creation is now being used as an amusement park ride by a douchebag whose only goal is to get richer day by day. At this time, Sonia asks why Travis works for a man like Charles. To answer her question, Travis brings Sonia to his lab at the zoo. According to Travis, he agreed to work for Charles so he could study the DNA of the animals that were extinct. Showing her a holographic lion, Travis explains that there are only a few animals left as of this year because of the virus and poachers. He continues that during every hunt, he does a remote DNA reading of the dinosaur. Since he can only do it bit by bit, it takes him more time to complete it. But once it's done and he proves that he can indeed bring an extinct dinosaur back, he will start studying other animals' DNA and bring them back to life as well. Hearing this, Sonia mocks him for saving animals by killing them. Yet Travis argues that they only kill the animal a few minutes before it dies naturally. For example, the Allosaurus they were hunting was supposed to die during a volcano eruption. By killing it in the right place and at the right time, it will not change the course of history. Still, Sonia insists that what they are doing is wrong and will eventually bring chaos to their time. 
Meanwhile, at the time safari, an employee accidentally drops the cartridges of frozen liquid nitrogen, the bullets used in the laser guns during the hunt. Without anyone noticing, a cartridge has been broken and drops water on Travis's gun. The next day, the two men named Christian and Ted go to Time Safari to inquire about the time jump. Upon meeting with Charles, they are given liability forms. Seeing it, Ted is kind of uncertain about it since it is expensive and dangerous, but Charles assures him that it will be just fine, boasting that since the Department of Temporal Regulation is monitoring Time Safari, the trip is safe and approved by the government. Sometime later, Charles introduces Christian and Ted to the team. As they prepare for the jump, the team informs them of the rules of time jumping. One must never change anything in the past, never leave anything behind, and never bring anything back from the past. All of these rules boil down to one reason, and that is, no matter how small the change they do in the past, it might greatly affect their present. Shortly after, they travel to the past. Arriving at the jungle, Ted gets scared and tries to shoot a butterfly, but Marcus immediately stops him and reminds him that what he's doing is wrong. Not wanting to mess up, Marcus convinces Clay not to report it to the Department of Temporal Regulation. Luckily for him, Clay agrees, saying that he will let it pass since nothing bad happened. When the Allosaurus arrives, they wait for Travis to initiate the shooting again. But this time, Travis's gun malfunctions, causing panic among others. Giving his gun to Marcus, he distracts the Allosaurus while his friend fixes his gun. Upon getting the attention of the dinosaur, Travis orders the others to hide behind the bushes, but strictly orders them to never get off the time-traveling path. And when Marcus finishes fixing Travis's gun and throws it back to him, Travis doesn't waste time taking the dinosaur down. They then regroup back together and ensure that every single one of them is fine. After swearing that none of them break any protocols, they head to the portal back to the present. However, a mud print is left on the time-traveling path, signifying that one of them steps outside the track. At the usual after-hunt celebration, Christian threatens to sue Time Safari, but Charles doesn't seem to be phased by it. Instead, he manipulates the situation, saying that a supposed scripted hunt turns into a real-life scenario that Christian and Ted managed to survive, calling them the most courageous hunters he's ever seen. However, the team is still bothered by what just happened. When the celebration is done, Marcus continues checking on Travis's gun and finds the earlier moisture damage. Thinking that the gun is the only thing that has gone wrong in today's hunting trip, Travis tells him that the malfunction can never happen again after everything that had happened. None of them notice that earlier, a strange wave of wind passes by, briefly cutting off the electricity in the whole city. The next morning, the news broadcasts the continuous temperature rise and the cases of dead fish found on the shore. In the time safari, doing another time jump with another set of clients, the team arrives in the past but only to see a dead Allosaurus nearby with the volcano erupting right then. Seeing this, everyone rushes back to the portal. Due to what happened, the team had an emergency meeting. They assumed that it is because Tammy missed their entry point but the AI denies it, saying that it sent them to the right coordinates at the right time. Then, Clay shows up and declares that Time Safari will be closed immediately because of what happened. Wanting to have answers to his questions, Travis goes to Sonia's place. There, he sees that she's being bugged down by her neighbors, blaming her for the sudden appearance of plants in their home. Knowing that she will not let him in, he conspires with a delivery man and takes the fertilizer Sonia ordered himself to her apartment. However, after revealing himself, Sonia claims that she has been expecting Travis to come and takes him upstairs where he experiences being hit by the wave of wind first-handedly. According to her, the wave of wind is called a time wave, but before she can explain further, they hear a scream outside her apartment. Opening the door, they see a woman covered in bugs and to their horror, there are tons of bugs coming their way. Cornered, Travis and Sonia decide to jump through the window. As luck would have it for them, a tree branch grows just below her apartment floor and they land on it. Looking around, they see how the surroundings have been covered if not ruined by plant life. Travis asks what is happening, to which Sonia describes it as a ripple effect. According to her, 
When they alter something in the past, the effect on the present will not happen at once. It will be like a ripple that starts in one place, then continues around the globe. As climate changes, evolution will also be affected, starting with climate, vegetation, more complex organisms, and finally humans, which will either evolve or become extinct. Wanting to fix what they have done, Travis brings Sonia to Time Safari, trying to come up with a plan with the whole team. Travis proposes to go back minutes before the hunting team, including Christian and Ted, arrived, then convince them to turn back. At first, Clay declines to allow him to do another jump, but Charles convinces him that they need to do it so no one finds out what the two of them have done. Pressured, Clay changes his mind and approves Travis's proposal. Then, they enact the plan. But to Travis's surprise, he is not transported to the jungle during the Jurassic period, but to a desert where he sees Native Americans running away from the time wave. Acting quickly, he runs to the portal back to the present, but the time wave catches up to them and completely shuts down the electricity. Favorably to them, Time Safari has a backup generator. When the lights are back on, they see how the plants have engulfed the company and the city. As they talk through what has happened, Sonia realizes that they cannot jump through a time wave, which is why Travis wasn't able to go back to the Jurassic period. Travis then suggests that they should look at the hollow disk during Christian's and Ted's time jump to see what might have caused all this. Yet, no matter how hard they try, they find nothing. Moments later, as Marcus checks on the physical log of that jump, he discovers that they return weighing 1.3 grams heavier than when they left. This means that one of them took something from the past and brought it to the present, which couldn't have happened since the time travel machine has a biofilter that will prevent them from bringing anything to the present. However, it turns out that Charles turned it off a long time ago, thinking that running the biofilter costs a lot of fortune. And to make matters worse, Clay is aware of it, revealing that it is his and Charles's dirty little secret. Knowing this, the team decides to investigate what they brought back from the past. After scanning all their gears during that jump with Christian and Ted but seeing nothing, they try to remember who's more likely to mess up. Just then, the team concludes that the item from the past must be with Ted. Subsequently, they discuss what to do to fix everything. Since they cannot jump through the waves, Sonia proposes that Travis jumps over them. And instead of going back 65 million years, he will travel 65 million and one years back. Then. Sonia will slingshot him to a year later at the very destination where he will need to be. However, the slingshot will consume most of his energy, so he will only have roughly about 15 to 20 seconds to fix what happened. With their plan all set up, the team gears up with the laser gun and heads out to find Ted. Going through the zoo, they hear a loud disturbing snarl and decide to move faster. Suddenly, a vine wraps around Marcus and pricks him with its thorns. With the unfamiliar animal nearing them, they help Marcus get up and get out of there immediately. However, it didn't take long before Marcus gets attacked and taken by an animal which turns out to be a reptilian baboon. Travis runs after them and kills the animal. As they run back to the group, the rest of the reptilian baboon's troop follow after them. Seeing this, Marcus tells the group to continue without him, not wanting to be extra baggage for his friends. Before they leave, Travis promises Marcus that he will fix everything so he will live at the end of all this. Meanwhile, the thorns that pricked him earlier make Marcus delusional so he dies with a smile on his face. Continuing on their way, Sonia states that even if they fix it, as long as Time Safari is operating, there is still the possibility of this chaos happening again since if they succeed, none of them will remember that all of this ever happened. Arriving at the building where Ted lives, they see a father and son sneak past the security to go to the nearby grocery store to get some food. However, they get attacked by the reptilian baboons. Seeing this, Travis quickly helps the father and son and uses the opportunity to enter the building where Ted lives. When they find him and inspect his gear, but find nothing, that leaves them with only one possibility, Christian. The only problem is he stays at his office that is far away from their current location. By good fortune, Ted tells them that there is a car in the parking lot that they can use to go to Christian's place. On their way to Christian, they get attacked by an unseen flying animal but manage to arrive at his place safely. 
There, Travis and Sonia look for Christian, while Lucas and Jenny stay to protect their car. When they see him, they realize that he's infected with the same vine that attacked Marcus earlier, making him delusional and violent, shooting a gun at Travis and Sonia. Travis tries to talk to him calmly, but to his surprise, Christian shoots himself dead. After that, they search his belongings and discover that in that jump, he stepped on a butterfly, unintentionally bringing it to the present as it got stuck to his boots. Knowing what they need to stop from happening, they go back to the other two and make their way back to Time Safari. On the way back, they get attacked by flying animals, which turn out to be huge bats, one of which takes Lucas away, killing him. To make matters worse, another time wave hits them, causing their vehicle to crash inside Time Safari. With none of them suffering any grave injury, the three go to the time travel machine, and to their shock, they find Charles' dead body on the way. Processing the situation carefully, Sonya believes that there's only one wave left and it's going to be the humans that will be affected. Looking around, they realize that the company is wrecked and that they won't be able to send Travis back using the company's time machine. Just then, she remembers that she created another portal in the university. All they need to do is bring Tammy's hard drive and she can send Travis back to the past to fix everything. The three then use the subway tracks in hope of facing less evolved animals there. However, they find it flooded. Without a second choice, they continue, not knowing that a large fish just starts stalking them. As they set foot on a train car, they close its door for safety. But the concrete above them breaks, eventually flooding the subway and trapping them inside the train car. Then all of a sudden, the evolved fish that's stalking them breaks through a window and grabs Jenny. As the water floods the train car, it attacks again and targets Travis, who signs for Sonya to get away. Just in time, the concrete above them collapses and kills the evolved fish, stopping it from eating Travis. Sonya then comes back for him and saves him from drowning. After that, they continue to the university where Sonya immediately sends Travis back to the past. Before he leaves, he promises Sonya that he will prevent this catastrophe from happening. At this time, the final time wave hits her and makes her a two-legged fish-looking animal. Concurrently, Travis arrives at the Jurassic period during the chaos of his gun failing to shoot at the Allosaurus. Taking advantage of the commotion, he calls on Jenny, ordering her to record him using the holodisc. Confused, Jenny looks back and forth at the two Travis that she is seeing at the moment. Then, Travis reveals that Charles and Clay have turned off the biofilter, which will cause a cataclysm in the world. They must make sure to check the filter when they go back and to give the disc to him only. Afterward, he goes to stop Christian from falling off the path and killing the butterfly. As history is corrected, Travis from the future vanishes into thin air. As they arrive back at Time Safari, Jenny talks to Travis and gives him the hollow disc of the hunt, telling him what she witnessed. After watching the recording, Travis understands that everything Sonya warned them about had happened and the hollow disc is proof of it. He goes to Sonya and gives her the hollow disc, saying that it contains everything she needs to stop Charles from operating Time Safari. The movie ends with Sonya inviting Travis for a cup of coffee, the first kind act she does to him since they met yesterday. A Sound of Thunder is a really good movie with bad script writing. Most of the lines are redundant, and the humor they try to sneak in doesn't work most of the time. Also though, understandably, CGI in 2005 is not that great, and the budget of this movie is not a lot. Some scenes could have been shot better in actual places or with practical effects than using a green screen. But if you don't mind all of the above, you will surely enjoy watching A Sound of Thunder.